The Northern Territory's new role as a space hub is continuing with the second of three NASA rockets scheduled to blast off from East Arnhem Land tomorrow. At the heart of the space odyssey is this, the sounding rocket. It's about 12 metres tall and weighs 2,200 kilograms. Nearly half of that weight is in the tanks. This machine will carry just under 1,000 kilograms of fuel. That'll be needed to blast it as high as 500 kilograms kilometres into space and generate about 7,700 kilograms of thrust, propelling it skywards in less than 27 seconds. That's just to get it into space. But ahead of the second launch, the question is, what happens when it comes back down to Earth? The ABC's Matt Garrick is in Nullanboy, where the world is watching Australia's entry into space. This is where I'm coming down to. A rocket retrieval mission in Arnhem Land can come with complications. We've got buffaloes and snakes around and you have to be careful. This Yungle Ranger group assisted in the recovery efforts after NASA launched a suborbital sounding rocket in the remote Northern Territory on Monday. Some pieces of the rocket ended up more than 200 kilometres away in central Arnhem Land and one piece is yet to be recovered before it's all transported back to the spaceport. We um, sling them under a helicopter and fly them back. Um, we basically trying to leave no trace behind. Not everyone is comfortable with where the rocket parts are ending up. There are people out there who live on the land. They hunt and, and uh, uh, move along that area. Like I said earlier on, and I've been saying time and time, Arnhem Land is not empty land. Yingia Goyula, whose electorate covers the new Arnhem Space Centre, believes some traditional landowner groups have been left out of the consultation about the retrieval process. People all around at the moment, I believe, including myself, we are still concerned. It should have been proper consultation done long back. The company running the spaceport dismissed the claims, saying the proper processes had been followed. You have a you know, better chance of one of the jets flying around in Australia, flying down and hitting your house, way higher probability than having part of these rockets come to you. Your book, Makaraya William Gumbala, special announcement on July the 4th, there will be second rocket launch happen in Kurkula. Equatorial Launch Australia also worked with this local Indigenous broadcaster to get the message out. Some of the people don't uh, understand English. So it's important for you all to understand how we work to communicate, to get information through our language. For Jawa Barawanga, any possible concerns aside, the rockets represent a chance for employment and economic development for the region. And that's what we want to see. We want to see our communities have a vision and dream and transformation of our young kids to be able to understand. You know, Yolngu can be also a scientist, scientist one day. As the industry fires up, so too do the dreams and fears of those watching on. Matt Garrick, ABC News, Norland Boy.